On Thursday of last week, Doug Emhoff took part in a campaign rally in Athens, Georgia, and that's where Joe interviewed the second gentleman. The discussion began with what led to Harris's candidacy, President Biden's disastrous debate performance in June. Take a look. You had the debate, and everybody's phones were blowing up for the next couple of weeks. And just about every Democrat I knew, every journalist I talked to, everybody was saying, well, they can't just hand it to Kamala. That's not going to happen. There's going to be an open convention. She's going to have to earn it. There's going to be fights. Why did everybody close so quickly around Kamala when all of the elites, all of the experts said that was never going to happen? I think it's um, a testament to her. I mean, f almost four years as vice president, she's demonstrated that leadership throughout. It may not have been covered all the time, but it, w it was there. She was building relationships right. across the party, across the country. And but again, no one handed this to but her. That, 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 she, wasn't, that wasn't the perception, though, of her. As you know, people but, are always knocking her since she's gotten the nomination. I've talked to friends, world leaders, ambassadors who say, oh, yeah, she came to our country two times or three times. Oh, yeah, we know her. We like her. All of these things that you find out afterwards that you've been doing the quiet work. Well, that's why those of us on the inside were not surprised. And that's why the many could have stepped up and didn't. And so, you know, I think they saw what I knew, and you're hearing after the fact that this is who she is. She's somebody who stepped up when we needed somebody, you know, t did 10 hours of, of hitting the phones and making sure that she was getting the word out. She wasn't, wasn't uh, preordained at all. And she earned it. And she earned it not only through her actions after um, on that day, right. but she earned it over the four plus years and through her career right. of being there. And whether it was being covered or not, it was happening. And that's what, what happened. Why do you think Donald Trump, you talked about the debate. Why, why do you think Donald Trump won't debate her again? Well, you saw the first debate, didn't you? Yeah, and I, yeah. Yeah, that's why. And his ass kicked. And so he's afraid that that's gonna happen again. Rather, he's spreading this fog this fog of misinformation and disinformation and gaslighting, uh, mm -hmm. rather than face her again, so we can well, and he's see the split screen. He's spreading it about you, saying that tabloid stories about your personal life, uh, saying it so should be front and center. He's saying it about your wife and, and making incredibly crude and lewd <laughs> suggestions about her past life, how do you stay disciplined and not really go off and not really push back hard at these things? We don't have time to be pissed off. We don't have time to focus on it. It's all a distraction. It's designed to try to get us off our game. Does it get you off your no. game? No. The, the, all we are doing, all we talk about is this election. We understand the stakes. We understand the responsibility. What are we the understand stakes? The what are the stakes? The very, our very country our future, what kind of future are we going to have? Who would you like picking the next two or three Supreme Court justices? The guy who picked the three who overturned Roe v. Wade and want to take away more and more freedom? Or do you want Kamala Harris picking those Supreme Court justices? Right. I mean, this is, you know, she said it. It's not just the most important election of our lifetimes. It's the most important election of our nation's lifetime. So right now, uh, you, you've seen us before in the before times. A lot of happy couple talk. You know, right. we, we love each other dearly. We love being around each other. We enjoy it. We have fun together. And right now, we're deferring that kind of uh, happy couple time because everything we talk about right now is what else can we be doing to win this election? This Where thing? else can we go? How yeah. can we make sure that we are getting the word out? And that's it because, like I said, the stakes are, are too high. So all that other stuff you're talking about, bounces off. It's just a distraction. We're not going to let so, it distract so you, us. So you talk about the stakes being so high. I don't know if you know this or not, but your wife and I were on the cover of New York Times Magazine this week, along with about 28 other people. And the question was whether Donald Trump would be able to jail the people he said he was going to jail. So does she think about that? 
Do you think about that, that if Donald Trump wins, if he's good on his word, he could arrest her and jail her and jail critics? We don't think about that for ourselves. We think about it for every single other person in this country. You know, she put herself out there and that comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. And so we're willing to, to take anything that's thrown at us for our country. We love our country. We're patriots. We care about this fu the future of this country like I know you do. And so this is why we are going to fight like hell for these next 20 something days for our rule of law, for our constitution, for our democratic ideals, not someone who's going to talk about, you know, weaponizing the Department of Justice to jail perceived enemies and to go against the free and fair media. This is all the stuff that people need to understand and not get sucked in by this fog, this Trump fog that's out there of disinformation, misinformation, this perception that he was somehow good on the economy when he was president. He was not. And all these things he's trying to, right. you know, dupe the American people on. When you have someone like Kamala Harris, a prosecutor, somebody who is an attorney general, somebody who's a United States senator, vice president, been in the Oval Office, helping make decisions in the Situation Room, doesn't have to train to be a world leader, already is a world mm -hmm. leader and has the character that people can look up to. And she tells the truth. So for me and for so many others, this is why we're all supporting Kamala Harris.